Hello, welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. Wait for the draw. Hope you're all having a fantastic day here. My name is Hamilton. I am a cryptocurrency trader, specifically Bitcoin, and I'm going to be walking you through the Bitcoin markets today. So strap in and strap on for this Sunday because it is about to go off here. We're going to be talking about the short term, the mid term and the long term for Bitcoin. It's going to be a bit of a quicker video today because I do have other stuff to do and my throat is very dry right now. So I'm trying to take it a bit easier so I can get all the way back up to 100% after being ill with the flu. Right. So without further ado, what has happened here? What really has happened? Right here. Uh, well, basically yesterday I said potential for a pump or a dump or a sideways and nothing is happening over the weekend, right? And I did say as well, if we do dump, I do expect it to eventually return back to that 15,530 area, right? So it looks like the stage is set right now after this dump to return to that area. Um, and if we are just looking at patterns right now, and if this doesn't continue down here, uh, we can see that we are in a bullish posture here, a uh, uh, an ascending triangle, pretty easy stuff here, right? Um, with that ascending triangle, we also have a measure move here from one side to the other for the most recent wave. Here is how we would draw this. Um, and you can draw it differently. You can draw it from the other side. But uh, this is my personal preference anyway. And this is what's worked the most profitably for me for the past few years anyway, right? So uh, with this, the measure move is all the way up to the top side of uh, this, this, this bigger, this bigger uh, symmetric. No, bigger ascending triangle here, right? We can see coming through, if we did hit that and uh, get some kind of rejection around that area, it would make a bigger ascending triangle here where we could uh, play out an even bigger measure move here with a chain reaction kind of scenario coming through, right? So the measure move on this bigger ascending triangle, if it does come through, um, which is still up in the air, but it does look like we are in a bit of a pump right now as we do begin this video. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a pump there. So uh, we can see that uh, the measure move for the bigger ascending triangle here is all the way up to 16k again, which would make sense. We also have this ATR band um, coming through, right? And uh, we are on predictions, I forgot to mention. Um, and with this, uh, this, eight, this volume weighted ATR band here, I would just say if we come up and test it, I would expect a potential rejection from this or uh, at least a pullback from this uh, for, for like a wave down before continuing up there, right? Uh, so that's kind of what I see happening here. Uh, we could easily, easily continue a dump here. So it's, it's important to, to look at all angles, but as of right now, and as of predictions right now, this is a bullish posture. I would expect it to continue and play this out. And then from that point, we can easily return back to that 15.8 by the end of today. Uh, really, really easy actually. Um, by the time the CME is open. And yesterday I did talk about the CMEs essentially uh, giving us this, this potential gap if it was a gap, but I would expect us to essentially return back to this 15.7 if there was a gap uh, as soon as the week starts, simply because lots of stuff is happening on Bitcoin and we can't really afford to be making gaps here uh, if you are market makers, right? So we'll see if this does get rejected here. We are in the price action channel, so candles are great, stay away. But uh, for now on the hourly, looking pretty bullish, looking like we are in, in the midst of a breakout. Uh, I'm not going to be trading this though, just based on the uncertainty surrounding the election right now. Um, uh, a fairly easy trade would have been to long this here, but it did look a bit iffy and we could have easily continued to dump down through, right? Pretty uncertain times. Doesn't make sense to be risking too much when we can just continue down to the low 14s, right? So right now, what I'm looking for here is more sideways, uh, essentially, after getting back to this kind of median point, this middle area at the mid 15.5 zones, right? So if we can get back to there, fantastic. We can analyze it a little bit better and just see where this is going from that point and obviously take some trades if we get up to 16K and, and take a long up there, uh, potentially as high as 18. Um, or if we do come down here, not a problem because uh, we can essentially look to, to maybe lose this 200 EMA and SMA right now uh, if, if we did fall over here after the weekend, I would say, right? So after returning to this point, we can still drop off the cliff. Uh, that's, that's a fairly likely thing to happen still, right? Uh, and if we do, 
we still have this ATR band to catch us as well at 13.7, right? But for, for, for right now, I would say 14K is, is the area I'm going to be looking for longs. Uh, once we do get back down there, it's just the reason why I'm not right now is because it is a bit trappy, a bit wicky, and a little bit uncertain in this range right now. I'm, I'm going to wait for one... Basically, I'm going to wait for the end of this weekend and then reanalyze re it and then uh, and then take a trade based on that anyway, right? Uh, again, still expecting big, big moves in the next few months towards the downside uh, as well as the upside. So there's going to be a lot of money to be made. There's no point rushing it right now. And I'm just going to get these beeps out of the way. Nice, good stuff. Right, so... Um, yeah, uh, moving on to the midterm here. The midterm is, is super important. Uh, we can see that we are in the middle of our moving averages here, just kind of uh, chilling in the median ground. Not really a lot to say there, uh, besides uh, the, the we're playing out a small bounce as of right now, okay? If we can get over these moving averages here, um, then that's obviously going to be important and a lot more bullish towards the upside. But for right now, again, I would just expect to edge back up into the center of this. We can still get rejected pretty easily. Uh, and one thing to kind of guide that potential rejection which i don't think is that likely to happen but it's important to to analyze it anyway and, and keep ourselves unbiased and reactive on the markets right so uh with this with this uh this atr band coming through right on the three hour now uh we have tested this for the first time since we broke out at 14k okay so potential for a bounce here but if we do lose it we do lose it a lot more bearish, and I would expect some sideways all the way down to the 14k area again. Uh, and then we will be playing out uh, what I would expect to be some kind of bigger descending triangle coming through uh, before either breaking towards the upside or the or the downside, right? So that's kind of what I see happening here uh, after returning to this middle area, uh, assuming we can get rejected here. If we if we if we get above this area, um, pretty much yeah, above this kind of 15.8 zone then I would be expecting some continuation towards the upside and another wave towards the upside as well, which we will be playing uh, comfortably, comfortably here. So uh, we'll see how this goes. We can still get rejected. It's important that we that we note that we are testing the ATR band. When we tested the one hour ATR band here, you can see uh, that we tested it once at a small bounce and then just lost it like completely, right? So uh, something similar here might be might be coming to fruition. And the lower side for this ATR band is all the way down at 12.5. So... Um, still really, really low targets if we did get down there. Uh, in terms of momentum, though, in terms of divergences, what can we see forming here? Uh, nothing really. There is some hidden bull on uh, some of these things, but as of right now, we are still just getting ready uh, to, to, to get that next big, big move coming through into this week. So uh, whether that's up or down is up for debate, but I would say it's more likely to be uh, down at this point, okay? Um if we do go up, though, we're still staying reactive and making money anyway, right? So you can see here, returning back down to this blue box zone, a long here would have been fine, okay? Uh, but again, I didn't take the long because it seemed a little bit iffy, and I did want to talk about uh, this, these trap zones coming through as well that were our resistance before, and then we just come down this weekend, and we've actually opened a candle below this resistance line, right? Which is uh, interesting, to say the least, because uh, this, would, this could potentially be a trap. Uh, one thing I was talking about with the, the Darth Maul here, um, for this potentially being a trap as well. If we did finish today on a terrible note here, for example, opening CMEs uh, at the, the mid-15.5s mid, uh, and then instantly dumping due to the election results here, um, then we're going to have a seriously big wick, okay? And then that's going to basically push a lot of pressure towards the downside, which uh, I would say we need right now for Bitcoin. It does need a healthy reset, but this can go down as a reset as well. I would expect still another down wave on CMEs though, because we haven't really had that reset on CMEs. And there is some kind of bearish things hinting right now for us to go sideways in this area. So uh, no matter if we break out, break down right now, what I'm going to be doing uh, is essentially waiting for this uncertainty to go just giving it a couple days and if we do end up up here that's not a problem okay we can just uh long this and play the the range all the way up right if we do end up down here then i will be looking for a long at this zone uh don't don't misinterpret me here i will be looking for a long in the zone but i want to be certain that uh that we're actually going to return back up there so yeah this zone will be important and we can still get up and uh there is the argument that we should have taken along here but me personally, as a cautious trader, as someone that that can see this potentially going sideways and down over the next week, doesn't make sense to be really longing, uh, especially if we are due to go down um, and we create a CMEs gap, something like that, right? Then um, 
then uh, we might be underwater for some time here if I did take this trade uh, and the election news did just push us down here for some FUD so um, I'd rather just avoid that underwater area and, and just play this as it comes right uh, so yeah if we do come down here and we do start turning around uh, on these smaller time frames then yeah that's going to be a bit better but you can just see here uh, just looking at this it's not fantastic and this wasn't a good long uh, to, to take here I wouldn't advise taking a long like this okay you want to look for those curls over or potentially even something like this and then a retest and then coming up like that and then there you've got a bit better of a pattern um, around this kind of good area here right in this case it is it is obviously an ascending triangle we are breaking towards the upside right now but uh, it is it's an iffy zone okay and and it's very wicky and undecis indecisive here so uh, the, that's the reason I didn't take that trade but that's kind of how I've been how I plan to be playing this anyway um, if we do get rejected here, fantastic. We can get a long in, but it does look like we are going to go up and fulfill this kind of pattern uh, as we've just talked about here. So uh, we're going to watch this set throughout the day. But again, it is a weekend. It is going to be trappy. We've got to be prepared for anything that can happen here. And then uh, we will trade this on Monday uh, for, for some better results, right? Because it's a lot less predictable on the weekend, right? So that's the video, I would say. What are we on here? 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I can't continue here today because I do have a lot to do, but that is the video. Quick shout out to my supporters here. Um, let me just find your, let me just find this, uh, this thing. One second, guys. Um, yeah, shout out to the supporters of the channel. Again, I would never advise you do that uh, and by supporting the channel, but um, thank you to those that have. Okay, and I'm just going to get your names up now where you at. Where you are. Yeah, Mr. Fish, thank you. Dexalog, thank you. And Jason, thank you for the support. Fantastic stuff here. Um, really do appreciate it. But, um, yeah, one thing I did want to say before I go here, guys, is, uh, one, there's a webinar on Wednesday. Just sign up on my website. Completely free. I'll teach you how to trade. Boom. Done. Uh, that's that's a done deal easy sound good to you sound good to me great <laughs> completely free so uh, yeah and the other thing is hash ribbons is looking like it's about to head up here and it's going to be important for my theory here with the miners against the uh, the other stuff is when this does cross back up uh, and this does give a long signal will Bitcoin continue towards the upside or will the whales counter trade it and dump this down based on the fact that we start a capitulation here and we had a girthy pump right uh, so maybe the whales maybe the uh the, the stock boys will be counter trading the miners completely here and this is going to be a good test to see uh for the future there anyway but uh that is the video guys leave a comment if you want to enter our weekly giveaway and i'll see you in the next video peace out and goodbye From Bitcoin Beats.